we've been talking about logic, how to use it. One of the things we talked about uh, last time was the, the, we asked the question, what is true? And what, um, can I get somebody to close the door for me? Can anybody tell me some of the things we learned about truth? It's true. Truth is true. Any anything else? Two of the things we learned about were the, the first principles. You guys remember what the first principles were are the two laws that we talked about? What are the two laws that we talked about? Laws of logic. The opposite truth and opposite Okay, so the first one's the law of non-contradiction. Two opposing claims cannot both be true. Good. What was the second one? No middle. The law of excluded middle, right? So something either is or it isn't. There's no middle ground. Okay, and when you're asking the question of how do we discover truth, those two principles, and those are the main ones we're going to talk about, but there are, there's one other main uh, first principle, they call it, but those two first principles are, they're like I, what eyes are to seeing. They are how we learn. The only way we learn anything is if we first understand these first principles. And of course, we talk about how they're not taught to us. We just know them based on how the universe operates. So we just know that two contradictory claims cannot both be true. And we know that something either is or it isn't. So uh, when you're asking the question, how do we discover truth, the very first thing it are these two first principles, okay? The fundamental laws of logic. But, are they enough? No. So you, what else do we need to do to discover truth? Anybody? What kinds of things do we have to do to discover truth? Search. We search. Okay, how do, you, how do we search? Google. I'm glad you bring that up because uh, I don't know. Google, Google is not how you discover truth. Okay. <laughs> now, of course, that's kind of what we've learned. That's how we operate now. Oh, we'll just Google it. Well, how did how did those truths that are on Google get discovered? Right, but they, they get put in there by people. But how does the information first get discovered? Someone finds out how. Huh? Okay, books. But where does the first knowledge come from that first makes it into a book? Sorry, seeing and hearing. Curiosity. Curiosity. Yeah. The word I'm looking for. Is observation. Um, you're also, you're also, yeah. you're also, next time, say. Yeah. 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 All right. Observation. You have to be able to observe the world if you're going to learn anything about it, right? So in the we talk a lot about Greek philosophers. Before kind of the rise of modern science, a lot of the Greek philosophers, they thought that you could sit in a chair and contemplate through logic the, the universe, the ins and outs of the universe. And they thought that that was all you needed to discover all the truths that there were to know about the universe. And it's a little bit complicated, but basically they thought the universe has to be a certain way logically. Therefore, I can just think about it and figure out what the universe is. 
But really, it was the beginning of modern science that showed us that that's not enough. Logic by itself, these first principles, are not enough to discover the truth about the universe. We have to go out and we have to observe it. We have to look at the universe. We have to study the universe. We have to do experiments and so on. This word observation, another word that's going to be very important for this class, is induction. Okay. Induction is a type of logic based on observation. I'll give you the technical definition in a second, so be, be ready to write that down. But induction is not enough either. We also have to have something called deduction, which is the lining up of premises, okay? So what is deduction? Yes, but what, what did, have you heard this word before? You ever watched a Sherlock Holmes movie? No, none of them. One of his big things in Sherlock Holmes is, oh, I, I used my powers of deduction. So what is deduction? Ruling things out. Ruling things out, yeah. Deduction is when you basically follow a train of logic. We'll talk about how more technically it, what it looks like. But think of it as using pure logic to follow a train of reasoning so that you can reach a conclusion. Whereas induction is observation. So let's, let me just give you the technical definition so you can write it down. Induction, the method of drawing general conclusions from specific observations. General conclusions from specific observations. That's inductive reasoning, yes. So the key words here are general to specific. Uh, yeah, general to specific. In other words, think of it as big to small. I'm sorry. That's the next one. Think of it as small to big. You're drawing general conclusions from specific observations. Small to big. So let me give you an example. Take this marker and I observe it drop. I observe a lot of things drop to the ground. And I observe that over and over again. And what do I what conclusion do I come to? Things fall if you drop them. Now, I can't observe everything, can I? I can't observe everything there is to watch drop. But I can come to the conclusion that because of this specific observation, there is, must be a general rule that applies to everything else also. So, again, specific to general. You're going from small to big. The small observation is one thing drops, and maybe you start doing experiments and you start testing other things, and then the conclusion is everything drops. Again, this is, this is a very basic example, but this is the idea of inductive reasoning. You're observing and you're coming to conclusions. Now, this is basically what the scientific method is, is all about. It's all about observation, okay? Any comments on this so far? Questions? All right, the next one is deductive reasoning, deduction. So go ahead and write down this, this one. Deductive reasoning is the inference of specific instances by reference to a general principle. So this is the exact opposite. This is big to small, okay? This is where you, you decide, you know what, there is a, a principle that logically makes sense. I'm going to follow that principle and follow that line of reasoning and maybe discover something specific in the end. So let me give you an example. By the way, I'll, I'll let you write it down first. So 
So the deductive reasoning was kind of started by a guy named Aristotle. I'm sure you've heard of him. Another Greek philosopher. And although this it was, you know, nearly this is over 2,000 years old now, this whole idea of deduction, it's still a very important piece of our logic today. We still use it. And so it's it's also going to be how we formulate our arguments for the existence of God. We're going to be using deductive reasoning. But we're also going to use induction, and I'll explain how. But the first thing we need to understand is what deduction looks like. So it's big to small, general to specific. Here's what a, what a, a here's kind of the most common example of a deductive argument. Okay, you have your first premise, which is the major premise. It's called a major premise, by the way, because this is the general principle that seems true of everything. Okay, you're starting off general and you're getting smaller. So the general principle, the major premise, is that all men are mortal. So then we get more specific. If all men are mortal, and Aristotle is a man, what would be the conclusion of this argument? Aristotle is mortal. Aristotle is mortal. Okay, this is kind of the most common reference uh, example of a deductive argument. You're starting off with the major premise, all men are mortal, and you're getting more specific. Aristotle is a man, therefore Aristotle is mortal. Okay? These are the kinds of arguments that we're going to be using, and uh, this is a very important concept in all of logic. Okay? Deductive reasoning. Now notice, Actually, let me ask you: How do we how do we figure out, or how do we discover if this argument is correct, is true? How do we come to the conclusion that this argument is true? Yeah. So, let's just say, for the sake of argument, we decide that we are going to, we want to discover if this is true, what's the first thing we have to do? We have to look at each premise, okay? So we start with the first one, all men are mortal. How do we know that's true? All the men born have died. Okay. How do we know that? Okay, so here's the here's what we need to understand. You have to use both inductive and deductive reasoning because these premises are proven through induction. Okay? So we're lining up premises, we're following a train of logic, that's deduction. But it's induction, observation, that's going to teach us if each premise is true. So we need both. Okay? In other words, we've observed premise number one. Just like we observed, oh, everything drops, we've observed as a human kind that everybody dies. At least we believe everyone dies. Say it again. Here's the question. Can we know with 100% certainty premise number one is true? No, we, technically we can't, because we can't observe all people die, can we? Yeah. So, technically speaking, we cannot say for certain that everything is affected by gravity, because we can't observe everything. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But, can we trust these conclusions? Yeah. Yes, we can trust the conclusion that all men are mortal beyond a reasonable doubt, because... 99.9, .9, it's 99.9% .9 certain. We just can't say it's 100% certain because we're not able to observe everything. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, when it comes to induction, a conclusion is only, 
probable. It cannot be certain. There's, a, there's one exception to this rule. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, So, what about premise number two? Aristotle's man, how would we figure this one out? Again, through induction. We would observe him. We would look at him. Can we know this one without with 100% certainty? Yeah, no. yeah, I think you can argue that this one could be 100% certain because you can look specifically at Aristotle, test his DNA, etc. We can't do that now because he's long gone, but you get the idea. Okay. So when it comes to a deductive argument, we need to understand kind of the terms here. An argument is valid if the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises. Go ahead and write that down. And by the way, we want an argument to be valid. That's the major premise. Minor premise. Zachary is a man. Therefore, what? Therefore, Zachary is a four legged reptile. Therefore, Zachary is a four-legged reptile. Is this argument valid? Is this argument valid? No? Okay, here's, here's where it gets tricky, okay? Technically, this argument is valid. Because the conclusion necessarily follows the premises. In other words, if premise number one is true and premise number two is true, the conclusion would have to be true. That's what makes an argument valid or invalid, okay? So if all men were four-legged reptiles and Zachary was a man, then it would follow necessarily that Zachary is a four-legged reptile. Okay, that's what makes this a valid argument. Is it a true argument? No. And that, so, valid is not enough, right? Induction tells us whether or not this argument is sound. Okay, so these are the two terms you need to understand about deductive arguments. An argument is either valid or invalid, and it's either sound or unsound. An argument is sound if it is both valid and all the premises are true. So this would be a valid but unsound argument. All right, go ahead and flip your sheets over once you've written that down. we're making an argument for the existence of God, it needs to be both valid and sound. So here's a chart to make it easier for you. Okay, go ahead and fill this out on your sheet. Deductive arguments, they come into two categories first. First, you gotta figure out, is this argument valid or invalid? If it's invalid, then you gotta rewrite the argument instantly, right? So you gotta first figure out, is it valid or invalid? And then secondly, once you've determined it's valid, you need to determine whether or not it's sound. It's either sound or unsound. The premises are either true or they're not true. So step one is you look at the argument as a whole and you say, yes, the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises. But step two is to look at each premise 
and by the way, there could be more permanencies if, if it was a longer argument. But your next step is to look at each argument and determine, yes, that's true, or no, it's not true. Right? So in this argument, which premise is the one that's messing things up? Yeah, the first one. It's this one. All men are not four-legged reptiles. This goes back to that game Mastermind, or, uh, yeah, it's called Mastermind. The game Mastermind we played. We drew a false conclusion in one of the games we played with the colors. We drew a false conclusion and we based our entire, the whole, like, next few moves on a false conclusion. So we've got to be careful. We have to make sure that each premise is correct if we're going to have a sound argument. Okay, any questions? Okay, one more thing about in, uh, induction. There is an exception to the rule, uh, and the rule, the rule being that all inductive observations are can be certain beyond a reasonable doubt, but they cannot be certain beyond all doubt. In other words, there's always a possibility that we're wrong about an inductive argument or an inductive uh, conclusion. The only exception to that is something called a perfect induction. And that's if we know all the variables. In other words, I can look at this paper and I can come to the inductive conclusion that every word on this paper is black, is in black ink. I know that that's 100% true because I know all the variables. Okay, so there, there, is, there are uh, instances in which induction can give you 100% certainty. But I'll tell you right now, most of the time, we can only be certain beyond a reasonable doubt. Let me give you another example. It's an inductive conclusion that you make when you're coming to school. Let's say you drive to school and you have a big test and you want to be there in time. And all the times past, and all the times past that you have driven to school, it's taken around 20 minutes. And so you have inductively concluded that it will take you 20 minutes to get here. That's an inductive conclusion because it's based on observation. Now, is that 100% certain that it will take 20 minutes? No, why? There, yeah, you don't know all the variables. Traffic could all of a sudden get in the way. Maybe there's some big event you don't know about today that's going to make the roads even more congested. Or maybe there's a car wreck. Or maybe you get in a car wreck. Right? There are variables you don't know about, but you can be reasonably certain it's going to take you 20 minutes. So that's kind of what induction is all about. Being certain beyond a reasonable doubt doesn't mean you're going to be 100 percent certain. And the great thing about deduction is that the premises, the way they're written out, gives you 100 percent certainty, at least when it comes to the train of logic. Right? We're going to be proving each one through induction, and those can't be 100 percent certain, but we can look at the overall argument and be 100 percent certain that if one and two are true, the conclusion has to be true. So that's kind of the power of deduction, but you can't just use deduction, you have to also use induction. Okay, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be throughout this class using both of these terms, and so I hope you remember what they mean. So what is, what is induction? Observation. 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 What is deduction? It's logic. It's basically logic. It's the lining up of premises and coming to a conclusion. All right, I'm gonna stop.